It's time for light that darkness can't defeat. It's time to escape from the shadow of death and into abundant life. For the people living in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Welcome to the Great Light Program with David Oyedipo Jr. Get set to arise and shine because your light has come. Vital keys to our supernatural settlement. Vital keys to our supernatural settlement. We have come to understand that we live in a kingdom that operates by keys. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 19, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Your command is determined by the keys at your disposal. In Luke chapter 11, verse 52, the Bible makes us to understand that these kingdom keys are the keys of knowledge. That is why the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8 and verse 32. Therefore, by the word of the Lord that we are receiving today, liberty shall be established for you in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, what are the biblical keys for your supernatural settlement? Let's look at a few of them swiftly this afternoon. Number one key is you must be born again. No life can be settled without Christ. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 16 and verse 33, I have spoken these things unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In me is where you find peace. Until a man is in Christ, the crisis of life continue. He said, outside in the world, you will have tribulation. But if you are inside me, be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. That is why we recognize that salvation is man's great escape from the calamities of life. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. He said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by those that heard him. Until a man is born again, the crisis of life continue. But if a man is in Christ, something has changed about his position. He has moved from subjection to dominion. I see each one here exercising that dominion in the name of Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, he said that he has, we are seated together with him and in heavenly places. And the Bible tells us where that is. He said it is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but in that which is to come so by redemption by salvation i not only escape but i am placed above the torments of life the forces that unsettle others are under my dominion if you want to know that place where christ is seated the bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 110 and verse 1, he said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So it is a place of dominion, a place of authority, where we are no longer in subjection, but we have been placed in dominion. Say with me, I am now in dominion. Say it louder, I am now in dominion. That is why the Bible says in the book of Colossians 1.13, it said that he has delivered us from the kingdom of the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So when a man is born again, he rises above the forces of unsettlement. He's placed in the place of dominion over the forces of unsettlement. Shout hallelujah. So the first key is you must be born again. Number two, 
is you enter into a covenant to serve God. Enter into a covenant to serve God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, in verse 5, the Bible tells us the state of the people of Judah. It says, and in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the country. But in verse 12, the Bible says, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And in verse 15, the Bible shows us, it said, And all Judah rejoiced at the oath because they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them and the lord gave them rest round about every time you find a man a woman enter into a covenant of stewardship with god a covenant to serve god god begins to settle every department of their life that is a picture of what happened in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. The things others are dying for, I will naturally give it to you as a settlement package. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. So you enter into a covenant to serve God. And let us recognize that the covenant to serve God is a choice. It is not a gift. Every individual's stewardship to God is given by choice and not as a gift. Each individual makes a choice. The Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, it said, If it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a decision. So it takes a decision of every individual to enter into service. It's not a gift. It takes a decision. And when that decision is taken, there is no department that God does not settle. He settles your health. He settles your finances. He settles your family. He settles your career. He settles your academics. He settles your business. Every area is supernaturally settled when you take a covenant to serve God. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. However, if you look at that scripture closely, in verse 15, 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 15, you will see something unique about their decision. He said, for they had sworn with all their heart and they sought him with their whole desire. They put everything in them in it and he was found of them. They swore with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. When you give God your all, he gives you his best. When you give God your all, they gave him their whole desire. They gave him their whole heart. And suddenly, God began to give them his best. He settled every area of their lives. I see God settling every area of our lives in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Particularly in this Matthew 6, 33 revival that God has granted to us. As you leave all other matters to focus on the matters of the kingdom, God shall be settling dramatically every area of your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Number three, be planted in the house of God. Biblical key to supernatural settlement, be planted in the house of God. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 21 and verse 13, Joshua 21 and verse 13. He said, Thus they gave unto the children of Israel, Aaron, the priest, and to our suburbs, to be a city of refuge for the slayer. The city of refuge. A place of hiding. A place of covering. A place of defense. In 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10, the Bible says that I will appoint a place for my people. He said, and they will not move anymore. He said, neither shall the sons of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time 
the church of God is a place of defense. It is a place of hiding. It is a place where you can take cover from all the assaults of the enemy. I recall the testimony of a brother who had all manner of frustration. His life was totally stagnated. Nothing was moving forward. And somebody invited him to church. And according to him, he said as he began to walk towards the church that was in London, suddenly he began to hear the sound audibly. He could hear the sound of chains physically falling from his legs. The closer he was getting, the freer he was getting. As he entered into Zion, the hole that had kept him stagnated all of his life broke in a moment. Why? Because upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the children of winners shall possess their possession. You will not miss your portion in the name of Jesus. So we discover that Zion is the place of liberty. But if liberty will last continually, then it will take planting. Many people stop at Zion, so they find, I mean, they just branch in Zion and step out from Zion. So you discover that their liberty is also limited. Anytime a man is not planted, he enjoys only limited liberty. As soon as he's out, the enemy is waiting for him. But when a man is planted in the house of the Lord, the Bible said, he will flourish in the courts of our God. He shall be fat and flourishing. He shall bring forth fruit in old age to show that the Lord is upright and there is no unrighteousness in him. Shout glory. So if you want to enjoy settlement, then there is a need and a necessity for us to engage and be planted in the house of the Lord. Number four, to enjoy supernatural settlement, you must return fully to settle down with God. Return fully to settle down with God. You cannot mix God with anything else. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4, it said, You shall not make any graven image or the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath for the, or that is in the water. And verse 5, it says, Thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord, I am a jealous God. And those who touch it, I visit their iniquities upon the children to the third and to the fourth generation of them that hate me. Every time you find people meddling inside occultism, meddling with anything that is contrary to God, you find the judgment of God visiting such individuals. And the Bible said it goes from the, the first generation all the way to the fourth. Anytime you are touching the unclean, you are affecting generations to come. Let's watch out. You cannot afford to continue to come to church in the morning and go to long rodded prophets in the night. You can't afford to do that. There are too many people mixing too many things together and that's the reason for the affliction. Hear this, if settlement will be your experience, then you must settle with God. You must settle with what? You must settle with God. You must settle with God. Some time ago, somebody came to see me, came with different members of the family. He said, this one, they said, the wife would die. This one, they said, and I asked her, I said, look at me. Who are they? And where are you going to hear these kind of things? It is because you are going all around to the wrong places. And when you go to wrong places, wrong things happen. Settle down with God. You can't be with God in the morning and be baptized inside Bar Beach continuously every night. You can't do that. The Bible says you cannot partake of the table of God and the table of devils. If you are going to enjoy settlement, then we must settle down with God. Psalm 16 verse 4, he said, The sorrows of them that pursue after all that God shall be multiplied. The devil can never give help to any man. He can only complicate his challenges. Watch out. Let us ensure that we settle with God. Anything that is trying to compete with the place of God is trying to introduce you to calamity. Therefore, ensure that you get rid of it. Whatever it is, get rid of it and keep your eyes on God only because your expectation is from him. Shout glory. Well, the good news for you is that your year of settlement has finally come. I said your year of settlement has finally come. I said your year of settlement has finally come. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 4. 
the bible says that for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of the redeemed is come say with me it is my year say it louder it is my year and i like that he said that the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come in other words i've determined that it is the year of the redeemed i've determined is their year of settlement and in case there is anything that wants to rear his head against it i've also determined vengeance against it so the good news is this every force that is militating against your settlement the judgment of god shall land upon them somebody believe it say the loudest amen I said, somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. The judgment of God shall land upon them. Let me say this for us this afternoon. Any situation of long continuance is a cause. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 59, it said, And the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance, whatever is marking anniversary, contrarily in your life, is a cause. That's, that was part of the causes of the Lord listed there. And the Bible said in the book of Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. He said, for cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles, and that we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So if you are in Christ Jesus, you are no longer a candidate for causes. You are redeemed from the cause. You are not packaged for causes. So tell that thing that is marking anniversary that enough is enough. Today marks an end of that thing in your life. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Whatever is of long continuance is a cause. That thing that has marked one week, marked one month, marked six months, marked one year, marked two years, five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. By your presence upon this mountain, that yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. Now here is scripturally, no child of God is permitted to suffer beyond a while or a moment. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10, it said, but the God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory, not shame, but glory. He said, by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. He didn't call you to shame and to reproach. He said, he called you to glory. And he said, after you have suffered a while, Whatever has been making men mock your Christianity, mock your followership of God, today it is overturned in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Nothing is permitted to stand beyond the while. The Bible also shows us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17, it said, but our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it worketh for us. Say with me, it is working for me. Louder like you mean it is working for me. It worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So one said it is for a while. The other one says it is for a moment. And it says that it is light and it must exchange for glory. The good news is this. Every shame and reproach is being exchanged for glory in the name of Jesus. According to scriptures. A while and a moment connotes the following. Number one, one hour. It connotes one hour. In Matthew chapter 8, Jesus came across the centurion and ministered to his servant that was not present. And in verse 13, he said, And Jesus said, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. 
maybe you came here with one condition or the other in your body it will not pass this hour it is healed in the name of jesus the self same hour the self same hour the self same hour in this self same hour every affliction generational affliction every affliction that has been reigning in your body and in your family is broken in the name of jesus in revelation chapter 18 verse 10 verse 17 and verse 19 we see the occultic stronghold also broken in verse 1 and 2 the bible tells us there that it says that he cried mightily that babylon the great is falling and it's become a habitation of devils the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird that's a demonic stronghold but look at what he said in verse 10 he said standing afar us for fear of her torment alas alas that great installation called babylon the mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come look at verse 17 it says for in one hour such great riches is come to naught look at verse 19 he said they cast dust upon their head weeping and wailing saying alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships by the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate one hour there is a one hour judgment that is available with god and it will answer for somebody here in the name of jesus That first scripture said, thy judgment came in an hour. The second one said, such great riches disappeared in an hour. And then the third one says that all of these have come to naught in one hour. In one hour. She's made desolate. She's emptied out in one hour. I, like, I have good news for you. Every one occultic personality that is trying to stand against your destiny in one hour judgment is answering upon their head in one hour desolation is coming upon them in one hour their struggle is being destroyed in the name of jesus somebody believe it say loud amen one hour one hour is more than enough time one hour too much for the god of all grace and all power one hour one hour so we talk about a while we are talking about one hour among other things there is a one hour judgment that we answer for somebody here you are the one saying loud amen i say you are the one saying loud amen some time ago by privilege i was sent to minister in one of the specialized classes the class for breaking generational causes and i made that statement from this scripture that in one hour there's going to be a judgment go home and find out that between this time and that time that personality has been cut down and one of us went back and said the next day came back from the class and said by the time they got home and made the call discovered that that individual that has been calling for devastation within the time frame given that person gave up and disappeared because the judgment of God can reach every part of the earth at any time. I'd like you to know something. That judgment is answering for you today in the name of Jesus. The lightnings of God are striking in the camp of the enemy. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. And early this morning when I got up and began to come down to church, I saw the lightning flashing. That means that the arrows of God are being shot from heaven against every assault of your destiny. Number two, it means overnight. Say with me overnight. Psalm chapter 30 and verse 5. It said, For weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And they that sleep, the Bible says they sleep in the night. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God said, It's not good for man to be alone. Verse 21 and 22, He put man into a deep sleep and took from him a rib and from there gave him a woman. His loneliness was terminated 
overnight. His loneliness was terminated overnight. There are people here that no suitor has come near you at all. But you will go to sleep tonight. And you will wake up in the morning. And there will be a mark of favor that people cannot resist upon your life. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Please hear this. The force for marital breakthrough is the force called favor. He that findeth a wife finds a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. Whatever has been a mark of rejection upon any individual's life, by the time you go to sleep tonight and wake up in the morning, that overnight sleep will translate the mark into a mark of favor. Number three, what does a while connote? It connotes one day or 24 hours. Say with me, 24 hours. Say again with me, 24 hours. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, it said, I've heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation, have I succored thee? Behold, now is the accepted time. And behold, now is the day of salvation. So there is a 24-hour frame. We call it a one-day frame. And the Bible shows us a picture of it in 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 and verse 2. Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord, tomorrow, about this time. Say with me, about this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? And in verse 2, the Bible tells us, he said, The Lord whose hand the king leaned on answered the man of God, saying, Behold, even if the windows of heaven open, he said, Can this thing be? He said, You will see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat thereof. He lost because he could not believe it. Please hear this and hear it very well. 24 hours is too large a time frame for God to address anybody's situation. He said, By this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, I love the testimony of one of our Dicknesses in the London church. She heard me say that by this time tomorrow, and she looked at the clock in the church and wrote the time down and said, this time tomorrow, this thing that is being said, I must see it. And according to her faith, before that time, the next day, a breakthrough that they have been waiting for for years landed swiftly on their laps because they engaged their faith in the God of overnight turnaround. A 24-hour time frame is before us again, and there will be yet other dramatic changes of story for many here in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Finally, number four, we have three days. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2. He said, after two days, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. I like that because the Bible said concerning Jesus Christ, they buried him thinking they had concluded his case. Everybody was celebrating his defeat. But had they known, he said they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because when they buried him, they thought they was going to mark their own greatest defeat. I have good news for somebody here. Maybe they have buried your case. They have concluded that you cannot make it. You cannot go far. You cannot succeed. You cannot break through. But three days from now, those that are looking for you in the tomb, they will not find you there again. I said they will not find you there again. Now hear this. According to scriptures, we are buried with Christ in baptism and we are raised up with him in resurrection. The burial cannot be more than three days. So whatever has tried to keep you beyond that, the Bible said the pains of death could not hold him. Whatever is trying to hold you down in that state of devastation, the power of resurrection is releasing you now. The power of resurrection is releasing you now. The power of resurrection is releasing you now. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. Three days. Three days. And there shall be a release. Three days. And the grave must vomit the personality inside there. Three days. 
and there shall be liberty. Three days and there shall be a testimony. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible tells us there in verse 19. Ephesians 1 and verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe? According to the working of his mighty power. Which one? Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. They kept him in the grave for three days. But when that power came, it enforced his release. And that same power is the one directed at you. And the good news is that not only is it in you, but it's going to come upon you by the anointing today. So in three days, there shall be a release in the name of Jesus. Let us also note this very important truth. The harvest time with God is always a time of visitation. Matthew chapter 13. Tears had been sown in an individual's life and farm. And in verse 30, here is what the master of the field said. He said, let both grow together until harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. I will say to the reapers, and we have been praying, engaging the reaper angels. They didn't only come to see souls saved. They also came to uproot whatever was planted around your life that does not belong there. He said, leave them until the time of the harvest. Because the reapers have a dual responsibility to harvest that which God has in store and to uproot that which the enemy has planted. So whatever the enemy has planted, this harvest time marks the uprooting of it in the name of Jesus. The good news about today is that this is also a special anointing service. And let's look quickly at how the anointing enforces our settlement. We must understand first that all forces behind our unsettlements are essentially spiritual. The Bible says that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, down to verse 5. He said, for the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. So every force about our unsettlement are largely spiritual. We must also come to understand that most cases of unsettlement are traceable to generational causes. Somebody at 10 years old, a man came saying he wants to seek the hand of the girl, of this daughter of a man in marriage at 10. He thought he was joking. He sent him away. Four years later, when she was 14, he came back again seeking the hand of this girl for marriage. He said, no, this girl has to go to school. And he placed a curse upon them. And for 50 years, no marriage in that, mar in that family. By one siege that was trying to become a generational assault on the family until Jesus stepped in and broke the yoke. Jesus is stepping into somebody's case today and that yoke is being broken in the name of Jesus. There are no cures for curses except in Christ who is the Redeemer from all the causes of life. There are no cures. There is no scientific solution for the causes of life. There is only a scriptural solution to the causes of life. Until a man meets the blessing giver, he cannot end a cause escaper. You don't escape the cause until you enter the blessing. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, Cost is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So we must come to understand that until you meet Jesus, you cannot have access to escape from the causes of life. But the good news is this. Every indignation or anger of the wicked, including generational causes, has a solution in the anointing. As the anointing is coming your direction, I see every indignation of the wicked being silenced in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 25 
He said, yet when it is a little while, he said, the indignation shall cease. And my anger in their destruction. And verse 10 says, for in that day, the body shall be lifted off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So the anointing of God, which is what we have access to today, has capacity to break every yoke, no matter what it is hanging upon any life. Today, as that oil comes upon your head, I see every yoke of the enemy being broken off your life in the name of Jesus. I said, I see every yoke of the enemy being broken off your life in the name of Jesus. According to scriptures, we are made to understand that the Spirit of God dwells within the anointing oil. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, David was anointed with oil and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. As harmless as that oil looks, it carries divine potency within it. The Spirit of God, once it is blessed, the Holy Ghost comes to dwell inside it and he manifests himself through it. I remember that I was in a chemistry class when I was in secondary school and the teacher came in with a brown bottle and inside a colorless liquid and lifted it and said, look at this liquid. I looked at it, it was clear, colorless like any other thing and he came to the chemical basin and took a piece of paper and poured the liquid on the paper and the paper caught fire. From that day, I started respecting liquid. I discovered that something may look harmless. It does not mean it is powerless. It looks like water, but anybody that makes mistake to, to think it is as harmless as water will have a regret to show. That bottle, once it is blessed today, the content may look like oil, but it is not cooking oil. That one has corrosive power to destroy every force of the wicked. It has devastating power to break the yoke of the enemy. It has the power of the Almighty to destroy all lesser powers. That's what you are carrying in a mystery packaged in that oil. A woman went into a place and they closed the door against her and said, this is the end of the world. She took the oil in her hand and splashed it on the ground and the oil caught fire. All of the assailants entered into the place of fear and began to shiver. She walked out of that place in dominion because she knew that what she was carrying was more powerful than what they are carrying. I'd like you to know that what is going to be released to you by that anointing is more powerful than what any occultic man is carrying. It's more powerful than what any, any opposer is carrying. It carries inside of it every force required to move you to your next dimension. And I see you shifting level in the name of Jesus. How do you apply the oil? Three ways. Number one, you apply it on your head. Psalm 133 verse 1 to 3, the oil was on the head of Aaron and it flowed down to his skirt. Number two, you take a shot of the anointing. You take a shot of the anointing. And it goes into your system to vacuum, clean it from every stranger that is within you. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 to 12, we find it there. And then number three, we anoint places and things. One of us took the oil in a job where she was not getting promotion and went to her boss's computer, sat down on it and wrote her name with the anointing and said, begin to see my name for favor. By the next day, her promotion was released because the oil was placed on a thing and that thing began to answer on our behalf. Things and places can be anointed. As we do so, watch out. The good hand of God that settles life and destiny will set to you dramatically. Someone's knocking at the door Someone's knocking at the door Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus He's at the door Say after me, Lord Jesus I come to you today 
I know that I'm a sinner. But I know you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I pray for you, Father, I thank you today for these precious ones you have drawn into your kingdom. Let the grace that has brought them keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, for each one of them we decree today that the barriers against their life and destiny be broken in the name of Jesus. Grace to walk with you all the days of their lives. Release it upon them. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. If you have just received Christ as your Lord and Savior or were blessed through this broadcast, we would love to hear from you. For inquiries and testimonies, send an email to info at tglmedia.org. We also invite you to visit one of our Winners Chapel churches near you anywhere around the world. Until next time, keep walking in the great light.